welcome back to the channel everybody. Today on this video I'm going to attempt to try to do and accomplish the impossible. Try to explain the herd management system summarily in Way of the Hunter. If you are new to the channel, welcome. If you're a uh, veteran to the channel, uh, you know that I typically do this unscripted and stumble along and ramble my way through all the information. Um, which I'm going to be doing now, which is a big YouTube no-no, but that's just kind of how I roll. Uh, so, we're going to get right to it. The very first thing I want everybody to know is herd management is actually optional in Way of the Hunter. Uh, every animal you see here, this is kind of my sad little trophy lodge. Yes, I've been playing since release and there's still lots of empty things. Typically because I only uh, taxidermy, like all the animals that are kind of sort of special to me. Pretty much they got to be five stars. Uh, but everything you see here is five star, uh, including my little badgers here and everything like that. But every single one of them was obtained with no herd management uh, pretty much at all. Pretty much just hunting. The game is balanced around uh, having the ability to obtain trophies and everything like that without uh, needing herd management. So I wanted to get that out of the way just so everybody knows it is optional. You can perfectly enjoy this game without without the chore. Some people don't find it a chore. Some people find it fun to uh, to do the herd management uh, part of it. But uh, yeah, you can perfectly have fun with the game just hunting and uh, having a good time. The herd management system, uh, to my knowledge, uh, was actually something they implemented later on in the development cycle. I don't think it was in right at the very beginning. And basically, uh, from my understanding, the purpose of it is just a way to reward... Uh, the, the the smaller player base that really grinds out and, and hunts the, the different habitats uh, kind of farms out the low fed animals and gives them, a, gives them a kind of a little way to reward them, increase their chances of getting a trophy. So what is herd management? You may be asking if you are a new player. Well, uh, herd management is the way to manipulate the fitness of your species in each habitat and a way to increase it or decrease it. Always you're trying to increase it, of course, because the fitness is uh, what governs the overall score at the end of the animal's life, what the maximum possible score it can get to. So, for example, when this little duck here was born, he was born with a certain fitness level. We're going to try to keep the numbers uh, simple here. Say his fitness level is right in the middle. He was a 50% duck. Uh, so in his first year of life, his fitness was 50%, and throughout his entire life, his fitness will uh, never change. It will always be uh, 50%. Oh, goodness, that is bright. And so that's one question that sometimes pops up. Uh, does the fitness change? And no, it does not. They are born with their fitness, and they keep it the entire time. And what that does is it just uh, gives the maximum amount of score that it will, that the duck will achieve, or any animal will achieve, by the end of the life. So as it grows, its score grows as well. So it's important to remember, and the fitness level is pretty much the cap is what it can get to. So as a rule of thumb, again, try to keep things simple, uh, the factors in score, of course, um, are age of the animal and the fitness of the animal. You put those two together, uh, and that is what their score will be. So they will start out low score, uh, nice and young, and as they grow, um, their score will grow along with their antlers or their skull size or whatever uh, the trophy may be. Just as a side note, uh, as, a, as a fitness level, um, sort of just uh, like a percentage to go off of if you're really focused on the five stars. It's not the same for every species, but it typically run, falls around the 85% mark. So if the fitness is 85% or higher, um, most likely, if, if it's 90% or higher for sure, they will get to five star. Um, but it's usually about 85%. By the end of life, by the, the, by the last year of their life, or before, depending on their fitness, like a 99% a fitness animal will hit five stars much earlier in the mature stage of the life cycle, where a 85%, uh, for example, will only hit five star at the very end of uh, its life because it's, it takes that extra time to get to that five star stage. So how does one uh, exactly uh, go about... Uh, increasing the fitness of their animals. And what we're talking about is the average fitness of the animals in a habitat. Uh, because when a new, say this uh, goat is born, uh, when it is generated on the map, it will calculate its fitness based on the bell curve. And you don't know what the bell curve is? I'll probably try and 
show an example up on the screen here eventually. Um, but it takes the average fitness of all the goats within the habitat, and then it will plot his fitness somewhere in there. And so what we're doing is when we're doing herd management is we're trying to raise the average fitness level of all the specific species in the single habitat and raise the average fitness so the bell curve kind of shimmies on over and gives us a higher chance um, for these new animals that spawn in to have higher fitness. Now, there's multiple ways to hunt in Way of the Hunter. With herd management, I pretty much classify two different ways. Uh, there is the aggressive herd management style. There's the passive herd management style. And then there's kind of hunting like, like I do. I do kind of a blend of passive um, herd management with... Uh, with sort of like a realistic uh, kind of hunting style where I typically just, for the most part, I will call out uh, the older animals. The ones that are looking older and low fit, uh, I'll call them out. I only like taking the old ones. Now, a lot of times I, I do shoot younger or, or adult, depending on just depending on the scenario and depends how bored I am and all that sort of stuff. And then the kind of the fourth way of playing is, you know, you just kind of ignore the whole thing, just go hunting, just shoot what you want. Uh, you can still enjoy the game a lot. All right, so how are you doing? How are you keeping up? I'm not sure if I'm keeping up or not. Uh, but to explain how you actually do the herd management, we're going to jump over to the map here. And we're going to be focusing on the grasslands, my favorite place to hunt. And I filtered by mule deer. Uh, so, and I think the best way to explain how to do the herd management is to explain the aggressive style. Just because the aggressive style is the more extreme and it has the more, the, well, the higher chance of uh, having some results. And then the passive style is pretty much the same, but it's just it's just a much slower way of doing it. Uh, so there is quite a lot to go over, but I'm just going to give sort of a, a brief example here. Now remember, uh, I'm going to use mule deer and grasslands, but this translates to every single species on the map and the habitat. Uh, so when we're talking about habitat, we're talking about uh, the little kind of font. might be hard to see on the screen here. See cottonwood or it says grassland. And down here it says rivermouth is grassland. Uh, the grassland is the habitat, and you can see over here, everybody's favorite uh, diamond drill is lowland forest, black fox range is lowland forest, uh, and small paws is lowland forest, up here you have the swamps. Um, that is the habitat. So even though they're different regions, uh, it is the habitat that we're talking about. So the cottonwood mule deer mingle with the river mouth mule deer, however they do not mingle with the uh, highland forest mule deer. And a quick side note just to get this out of the way as well before I explain the aggressive form of uh, herd management. We're going to go in the encyclopedia, we're going to go to animals, we're going to fly down the mule deer. And what we're going to do is we're looking for the primary habitat of them. They all have a secondary, they all have a primary. And how, what this works here is, as, as you can see on the mule deer, they have grassland as a primary habitat and the lowland forest as a, as a primary habitat. Their secondary is highland uh, forest. Uh, so what this means is if... Uh, what we're doing is we're focusing on oops, where uh, the icon lies on the map here. So if the little white icon, wherever this icon is landing uh, within the habitat, that's the habitat that the little icon is, is associated with. So if we look over here to like Thorn Springs Highland Forest, we have mule deer here, mule deer here. Uh, this is a secondary habitat for them. And what that means is basically the mule deer that are born in these herds uh, have a... They don't have any kind of bonus to their fitness. They kind of, you know, they just roll pretty much right on the, right on the middle of the bell curve kind of thing. Uh, they don't they don't get a bonus. So uh, there is a difference there because if you're hunting a mule deer in the lowland forest uh, over here or on the grasslands, it's a primary habitat. They'll get a bonus. So every every uh, mule deer that is born gets a little bit of a bonus. It's never been disclosed exactly how the bonuses work, um, but it is a bonus to the average fitness. Uh, so there's a higher chance that the animals in the grasslands and the highlands, like the mule deer for specifics, uh, will have a uh, higher fitness than the highland uh, mule deer. And there is one additional bonus that happens. If you happen to be hunting animals that are in their primary zone, and they are also in the primary habit, or primary, in their primary zone, and they're also in the private area on the map, they actually get a bonus for being in the private area and in the primary. Uh, to my knowledge, if if the private area is the secondary habitat for the animal you're hunting, it doesn't get the bonus. Not sure on that one. That one never really got fully cleared up uh, for us. Not a big deal anyways. 
when you're going to go into these private zones, uh, you're pretty much looking for the animals that make that zone their primary habitat. Uh, because they'll get the primary bonus and they will get the bonus from the private habitat. So in this case, the biggest mule deer, these guys here, these four herds here, are going to be uh, the biggest on uh, the map. Uh, we'll have the highest chance anyways. They'll have double bonuses, all right? Uh, so what happens is uh, people just end up hunting these private areas because uh, most animals will have a private area that they, they live to. And on Nez Perce here, same with Transylvania, they have private areas as well. Uh, but in uh, Nez here, uh, it is uh, up here, the Falls Reservoir for the swamps. Yeah, pretty much wherever there's a cabin uh, located that you unlock in the game here. Uh, and what's the other one? I think it's a She-Devil? She-Devil should be one as well. And then down in Hallowitch where everybody likes hunting the black bear uh, to try and get that uh, some of those missions done. All right, so I hope that is uh, clear as mud anyways. I know it's kind of a lot of information. You almost have to take notes in this game sometimes. Uh, but again, remember, it's all optional. This is just if you want to know how it works. Uh, so we're still going to be looking at the grasslands just because it is easy here uh, with the mule deer. Now, uh, how you raise the 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 average fitness uh, of the habitat here. So we're, we're trying to raise the average fitness of mule deer and the grasslands, for just these two zones. And if you're doing the aggressive technique, what you're doing is you've got to hit every single mule deer herd pretty much as fast as possible. If you can do it all in one day, great. Uh, usually you can't. Uh, you don't have to do it all in one day, but the quicker you can knock all these guys out, uh, and a perfect scenario is you want to remove all low-fit mule deer bucks in every single one of these grassland herds. So how many we got here? Uh, this one doesn't count. Uh, it's uh, Hollywood's over here. Uh, it's just it's just going to be doe. I don't think they've changed that. I think it's always doe now after you take out Hollywood. Uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks like eight, unless I don't have some popped up on this map uh, but anyways if you can take out every single low fit mule deer and all those in a single day when the day rolls over uh, it, sometimes it takes one day or two days for animals to spawn in so sometimes you, you get kind of two days to do this um, if you remove all the low fit ones uh, the overall average of all the bucks in the grassland will have increased all right, so if the average is 50%, you take out all the low-fit ones, you might have been able to push uh, the, the average fitness up to like 65% or so. So that means when the new animals spawn in a day or two later, um, they will be running on an average fitness of 65% instead of 50. So they'll all be landing around that 65% mark instead of the 50% mark, which on a bell curve, um, it doesn't make a huge difference on like those 90% fitness ones, but it does make a difference. It increases... Uh, the chances. So that's typically how the aggressive, um, the aggressive herd management works. You're, you're pretty much not going to help the low fit out of the entire habitat. And it definitely depends because if you're trying to do, say, highland or sorry, lowland forest, uh, they're much more spread apart. There's going to be more, um, more deer to, you know, a lot more low fit ones to track down, right? Uh, so it is tricky. And it all depends what you want to get out of the game. And we've had some people really like show up in the Discord that have really went at this, and it does make a difference. Now, if you're doing passive uh, herd management, which kind of I've done since the start of the game, passive is just typically as you're hunting, um, you're just being mindful to uh, shoot the low fit ones you run into. So basically, you're just targeting low fit. And as you play the game longer over time, uh, just by just hunting low fit, you know, looking out for trophies, things like that, but typically just target, targeting the low fit, uh, you will slowly move that bell curve um, slowly over to the right. It won't make a big difference, though. That's what I mean. It, it looks like, in my opinion, what I've seen, uh, only the aggressive herd management style really makes a difference. A passive only makes a very small amount, and I'll kind of show you if I can find kind of like a bell curve to pull up on the screen. Ah, yes, perfect. Microsoft Paint, a favorite program everybody here. So what we're going to do is just look a quick example of, bell uh, of the bell graph just so you can see uh, what it is. Pretty much you got your little axis, or X axis across here. And then your little curve is going to look something like this. Ooh, kind of like a bell. Like this. Yep. 
And then uh, for this example, we're going to use the 50% is in the middle here. So the bottom is your X axis. Uh, this is your fitness level, so zero. And then you got 100 over here. And then up on the Y axis is just your population of your animals here. Population animals, right? Okay, so this is your average fitness. Deet, 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 deet. So if your average fitness of the habitat is 50%, most of your animals are going to be following, you know, uh, kind of around here like 40 and then 60. So that's why you're going to see a lot of your animals are falling uh, between the 40 and 60 mark because they never actually disclosed where the like where the the starting point is of this we're just going to use 50 uh, for example oh and a couple pieces of information really quick uh just if you didn't know a low fitness is designated as anyone between zero and 50 percent all right and then high fitness is uh between 50 and 99.9 i don't think there's any 100 uh, so just if you want to know uh this is low and then this is high fitness okay uh, so, uh, yeah, just to get that out of the way, just so you know uh, how to distinguish the two. All right, and then uh, when you are uh, culling animals and you're removing the lower average, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be pushing this average line over to the right. Uh, so basically your average, uh, this is going to look a little messy, so I'm just going to reset the screen here. Okay, if you budge... Uh, the average fitness over. Let's just say you do the aggressive thing. You could manage to get the average fitness of uh, the animals in the habitat up to 65. Your middle part of your bell curve will be up here now. So we go like this. We, woo, and we got our nice little bell. And there we go. Where you still got, you know, your 90s up here. Uh, so this is why it doesn't make a, a huge uh, difference here. Um, I didn't do the bell curve <laughs> very well here to make this point uh, but it tapers off on either side right so where when it was at the 50 percent point you would just have this kind of like small little sliver of a percentage in the like above the 90 percent uh, when you budget over you get a, like a slightly a bigger sort of sliver at the end so you are getting more 90 percent fitness animals uh, I'm talking about like this little part here, but it's not drastic, right? You're still going to be getting, uh, you're still going to be getting the the majority of 55 percent, 70 percent. But if you if you push it this much, um, you know you'll now be getting high fit all the time. So you'll be getting all these three stars and four stars now. So you'll know you'll, you're successful when you're starting to see all these mature animals being, when you're starting to see four stars all over the place. So that that's where it happened. You don't necessarily, you will get more five stars, um, but it, it won't explode to five stars. The game is balanced in a way that you can't actually wreck this. Like you can go the opposite way, right? By shooting a bunch of the high, fi uh, the, the high fitness animals. But if you, um, like, if you leave the habitat alone for a while, it'll come and settle back on, over time, it'll settle back on its default point. They've balanced it that way. Uh, but they've also balanced it so you can't really get this bell curve all the way over to the right where you can get this this 90%. Because since it's a bell curve, um, you can never really get this little curvy part really high, right? It's always sitting kind of low, but you will get more. But what happens is you really get a boost in the four stars, which is like this kind of area. And this is kind of like your three star area. Like you get you get a big boost in the three stars and the four stars, but that always gives you a higher chance uh, of the five stars. So I hope that makes sense. Remember high fits anything above 50, low fits anything above low, um, um, below 50. And you can't actually destroy this because if, uh, same thing, if you if you um, increase the, the average fitness and move this bell curve over, uh, you have to keep at it. If you let it go and stop managing, like doing that aggressive management on the herd, uh, the bell curve will come back down and set back on the 50%. How long it takes to do that is kind of unknown. It takes, it takes hundreds and hundreds of um, animals and documenting this and all this science to totally get that down, uh, but this does work. Uh, but it's mostly that aggressive one where you'll, where you'll see the difference. Okay, goodness, that was a lot. I don't know if I covered everything or not. That is just a lot. Remember, I'm just winging this off the top of my head. That's just how I do it. I bring back the old school, am the amateur YouTube of 10 years ago. Uh, you just push the record button and you 
you do the video because you love doing the video kind of thing. Uh, but uh, another question that may come up is how exactly do you go about hunting and like uh, doing the herd management? So what we'll actually do, of course, uh, we'll do one quick little example, but before I do that, I'll just give you I'll give you the breakdown on it. Uh, typically, you just have to locate the low fit animals, and the easiest way to do that is um, pull out your little collar here. So here's the deer grunt call. Uh, if you're new to the game, uh, when you first start playing and you and you go to call, oh, I can't do it inside. Just a second, we'll jump outside. Turn the flashlight on. There, you'll get uh, attracts females. You can unlock the other calls where it says uh, attracts low fit and attracts high fit animals uh, through the perk system. So uh, basically by hunting called an or called animals in, uh, you'll unlock them. Uh, but the easiest way uh, to do that sort of aggressive herd management is to uh, do the low fit call. And then whoever responds to it will be below 50% and they're free to shoot. Doesn't matter their age or anything like that. If they come to that low fit call, uh, they'll be low fit. Now remember, there is a bit of an RNG system in place uh, where animals may refuse to come to any call at all. So then you just won't know. And in that case, um, if they don't come to the call, you have to do it visually. Some animals don't have a call that uh, they will respond to, uh, such as the goat and sheep uh, species. If they don't have a call, you got to do it entirely visually or with the hunter sense, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. Um, but the general rule of thumb is you're doing it visually or using the hunter sense UI, the little star system in the top. Uh, you do not want to hunt anything young. They're all one star young. You do not want to hunt any one star adults, especially not two star or three star adults. Uh, one star adults, sometimes you're safe to do, but it's, it is... Unless you're really, really, really experienced on like the specific animal you're hunting, some of them it, it'll be just impossible to tell. But typically, do not shoot the one-star adults because one-star can still be a 90% fitness. It, it depends when it turned into like like how early of an adult it is. It's like if it's if it's early on adult, like if it just turned adult, it's pretty much still young, and they're all one star. So it's anyways. I recommend not shooting the one-star adults. Typically, you just want to shoot one-star matures. If it's a one-star mature, you're good to go. If it's a two-star mature, you're still probably okay to go, depending on the species, depending on how long their uh, mature life cycle is. Uh, you're pretty much safe. However, if it's a brand new mature, like right out of the gate, just turn mature and it's two-star, it can still reach five. It's unlikely, but it can still reach five. Uh, this means it might be sitting right on the 86% mark. Uh, a sort of thing. But you are safe to shoot two star matures for the most part if you're familiar with the species and you're familiar with seeing the fur, uh, like the aging fur on it. If you see a mule deer and he's a two star mature, they have extra aging details in them. If they're looking very gray, very white, uh, very old, right? If they're, they're really looking old and they're two star mature, you're, you're safe to take him out because he's probably He's probably 55% or something like that, and you can still uh, take those guys out. We'll just give a little bit of an example here of uh, how to do, you know, a basic little uh, culling, which uh, is simple enough, but I want to do just a little bit of hunting uh, in the video here. And I just noticed uh, cruising through here, and here comes some deer now. Uh, I like the nostalgia I get driving through here. Uh, it feels like, you know, a year ago, cruising through here for the first time. I'm pretty sure there's a mission that sends you down these roads. And it's just a, kind of a cool experience. So I always like driving the, the familiar the familiar territory here. I think that was the herd I actually wanted. Oh, they're coming this way, too. Uh, let's just see. Do I have the ID on? Oh, I do. So two star mature. Ah, so here we go. They might be a good test just to see what sort of percentage uh, they fall into. Uh, so, it wasn't quite their drink time. They must have been eating right here. I was going to see if I can track them down. Alright, so I ended up having uh, deer actually cross the river here. I don't actually know about this herd. Oh, it must be this one. Or this one? This one? <laughs> okay. Oh, it's this one here. Alright, so I spooked this one. Okay, this is the one I was looking for. Uh, this one right down at Rivermouth, down by the camp. I don't actually see it very much, so I wanted to wanted to see who's in here. Ah, there we go. Perfect example. Uh, so one star mature. So it doesn't matter uh, what age 
this guy is, just as long as he's mature and he's a one star, um, that is what he'll be now. Uh, it might be hard to see. There's a mature female there, and I can't tell if she's that white because of how old she is. Or maybe albino. Uh, but anyways, in this case, if you were, uh, you know, unsure of what low fit is, because I mean, sometimes it's hard to see on the camera or on the video. Maybe I'll, I'll try to get in close so I can use the little drone. This mature is um, a, a newer mature, uh, which can be a little deceiving sometimes. Uh, I can tell by his uh, fur. Yeah, he doesn't have the old one, so he's he's new. But since he's a one-star mature, uh, you're he's very unlikely to be over 50%. He'll probably be 40% or even lower. Uh, so yeah, if, if you don't know, what you can do is um, do the low fit call. Now here's the thing though, I want to... Okay, we're going to do a little cheaty method here with the camera for a second. Doop. And I want to see if there's an albino here. I think this is just an old, an older one. So all you can do is you can fly up, no, so yeah, so it's just the older the older scan. You can fly up with a little drone camera if you're not playing on Ranger or whatnot. Uh, and then you can do this and click over here and then you can do, no, wrong one. You can change the field of view and get a little bit of a zoom on you. Um, see how different her fur is? But that's just the aging fur. And the guy we're looking for is this guy right here. So he eventually will get this kind of white and gray and that's how you tell they're really old. Uh, so if you see a two-star that's really white and gray like this, then you're safe to go. Uh, but if it's a, a two-star mature that's this, like, younger color, uh, he can still really get there. So I wouldn't take him down. Uh, but that just gets to know the game. So basically, uh, if we didn't know there was a one-star in there, one-star, you're, you're free to shoot. Uh, pretty much, you just want to get your call out. Select the low fit. And do the call. Remember uh, after... Oh... Uh, well, after the latest update there, um, we have the longer call range, so 250 meters. And we should be, well, within 250, yeah, they're about 150 there. So see how this guy is not coming? He might not be low fit, and he's uh, a young one, so he's impossible to tell. Um, he's not coming to low fit, but that doesn't mean he's high fit. It is also possible that uh, he won't respond to any call for the time being. So that's a little bit of randomness to put in the game and you know what look at that this guy's not coming either so these guys have their little collar ears turned off remember to do the call right when it comes in the middle of the circle or not middle of the circle middle of the big white line there in the middle for maximum effectiveness oh here we go now okay here he comes here he comes so it took two calls there if you keep calling you might get another one to start coming but I think it's just the two the two bucks in that one, right? Oh no, here's another one. Okay, the first call pulled this one, and the second call pulled the pulled this one. There we go. So we got two of them coming in now. If I do a third call, um, we might get uh, that younger one to come too, because then it's just a low fit herd that you just you just want to erase all the bucks. If that's the case, so what we do is we do one more. See if that other guy gets up. So in this case, uh, for doing that aggressive herd management, you'll want to take both of these guys out. You'll need to take them out for, for it to work. Uh, it's it's kind of a lot of work, but uh, that's I me. Mean, I never really do it. I just kind of like to casually enjoy the hunt. Uh, these guys are going to take a minute to come in. But you can sort of see fur variation differences right here. This guy looks older than this guy. Takes a little bit getting used to. This guy's really low fit, though. I might actually aim for him because... Oh, they're both. Their antlers are tiny. This is a low fit group. They're mature with, with a small rack. It's just... They're going to be real small. Um, I'm going to bring them both in. Because... I've been uh, fooling around. I uh, don't do this at home. Or actually, maybe. I've been fooling around with the 16 gauge here. Um, the over and under. Uh, so, two shots. I might be able to take both of them out. Uh, that could be fun. I did miss one thing. I think I've covered everything. Again, I just rattled this stuff off the top of my head. Uh, when I'm talking about the average herd fitness of the of the entire habitat, um, it's including all all the herds, right? 
There has been some talk. I've never been able to fully sort it out, though. Um, apparently, the fitness of the individual herd also factors in. Uh, some people are certain it does, and I think it's been confirmed. But uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't know how much of a factor it does. That, that one's still kind of confusing because here's the thing: What happens if I took out all three bucks of this herd? Then, then the average herd fitness is nothing. There's no bucks that exist, right? Uh, females are all zero, but they don't count towards it. Uh, so how does how does that work if there's no bucks in the in there to calculate? Like I, th anyways, I I try and keep it simple and just focus on taking out the the average uh, or just raising the average is what I would do. Uh, the individual fitness of the herds, uh, I haven't been convinced that it's uh, it's probably a thing. I just I don't know. I I don't I don't see it uh, like having that big of an impact. Um, some people will be like, oh yeah, that herd's high fit, so the next one will be high fit. Uh, that I can see that it, it does exist, the herd having a thing, but it also might be just player perspective, right? You're just relating stuff that might just be coincidence. I don't know. But, uh, okay, we're going to try and take both these guys. This guy's getting real close. We're going to shoot the guy in the back first. And then swing around. Or just swing over. See if we can do this. Now, the first shotgun shot I usually get stutters. Yeah, oh my goodness. That's uh, new from the patch. That stutter. It used to... Like that. That is an update thing. I don't know if I even killed any of them. Oh yeah, I definitely got this one. Uh, that stutter used to never happen. It's kind of driving me nuts. But I also never uh, shot with the, uh, with the uh, shotgun too much. Uh, so this one worked. Uh, where's this guy? Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. This one doesn't say he survived. Anyways, don't go hunting with... Uh... Oh, yeah, there we go. I think I got them both. Let's track them down and see what the shots look like. Yeah, that stutter bothers me. I, I was hunting with a shotgun before, and it wasn't doing that before. Uh, on the first shot, but even the second or third one did it. If I, if I use the... If I use it more, it seems to go away. Like, it's like... Uh... The game's caching something? I mean, it's got to register all those pellets hitting. Uh, now, come to think of it, I've been using the 12-gauge, so maybe, like, it's got less pellets, maybe? And it was all bird shots, so there's lots of them. Uh, but I, I don't remember that start. It's kind of bugging me. Uh, oh, here... Oh, no, that's a rock. I thought maybe it came down here. Oh, no, it is one. Okay. Uh, so let's see what we did. I don't know which one this is. Let's see here. So we'll take a look at them. So yeah, definitely a little fit. I think this was the far one. I only hit one left lung. I think... Yeah, this was the far one, right? Because he was broadside. He was turning at the time. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't even know. 22 meters. That sounds like he was... Hmm. I don't know which one it is. I'll have to watch back and play. Anyways, but see how well that bird shot's working? Look at that. Lunged him. 22 meters. Lung and flesh kill. Uh, what else? Uh, what do we got here? So that's 22 meters. Uh, so let's just see. 30%. So, yep. Yeah. All right. So we're definitely low. So we called both of them. Uh, and let's just find where the other guy went here. I think this was the far guy. Oh, he went to have a bath there before he passed on here. Hey, let's pick him up. He looks really small. Yeah, another lung. Look at that. 44 meters. Okay, that was the first one there. 44 meters, a 16 gauge. Still lungs him. I mean, if without the stutter, I'd be using the shotgun all the time. 16%. You can see, right? The antlers here. He's, he's had a long life, and this is all he was able to muster for antlers. 16%. So that is the way to do it right there. Bring the shotgun out, take two of them out with a low fit call, just like that, and go to each each herd there and uh, do the same thing. Uh, you do the best you can, reset the day, you might have to do it a couple times, a couple days, and then the new ones that spawn in will have a slightly higher average uh, than uh, the last time 
uh, new animals spawned in. And then you do it again, and you just kind of keep moving that bell curve up just a little bit at a time. And uh, that's what I mean. You have to keep kind of working at it. But you get kind of diminishing returns uh, because when you start pushing uh, that bell curve up high enough, you start you stop getting low fit animals, uh, right? None of, and then you just can't really tell because all of them only come to the high fit call. So then you got to figure out which animals are between 50 and 70 percent, and that's where the game gets you uh, because it's so hard to judge that. If you can remove all the animals that are 50 to 70 percent with all the low fit, then your bell curve is going to be extremely high. Uh, but that would be the reason why they keep that high fit such a wide range, uh, so you can't really manipulate it. Uh, but remember, you can't really break the game uh, with um, with the herd management. I mean, if you shoot all the high fit ones, just leave them alone for a little bit, and uh, the habitats will rebalance out again. <laughs> now look at this. I got mule deer in front of me. So I said, I'll do this one more time. Uh, I was going to do some low fit calls, and I'm hearing calls out to my right. I'm sitting here calling this in on top of the UTV, and I've got white tail coming right in. Man, talk about parking my UTV right in the middle here. Look at this guy. One star mature, he's got to go. He's barely got anything on him. And this one star adult's much larger. So, the same kind of thing. Uh, th I switched out uh, for the uh, 12 gauge uh, Cinnamon Sky. Uh, just because I'm curious if it's just that shotgun. Like, it's got so many pellets, it's stuttering the game. I, I don't know. It's kind of bugging me, though. Uh, my computer um, should have no issues with the game at all, so it's kind of kind of bugging me a little bit. Anyways, let's pull out the 12 gauge. Let's just see if we do the same kind of thing, uh, just for fun. Yeah, stuff there. Yeah, a little bit, eh? I think the game's just calculating um, all those pellets I got ahead. Uh, so there they go. You know, one other rifle I should use, or shotgun, is the the uh, semi-auto one with uh oh small clear but see it doesn't say animal survived oh that's i mean i think it got them both um but it's going to be flesh kills on both so that's going to actually going to be a little bit of tracking so that's interesting with shotgun hunting, even though we're using the bird shots. See, I don't actually know if the 12 gauge in the game has less pellets than the uh, than the the 16 gauge. I would think the 16 gauge has more, but there's so many pellets in the in the bullet cam. Uh, they, there's no way you can count them or anything like that. So I'm wondering if maybe the 16 gauge is actually better because if it has more pellets, it'll actually more of them will hit the lung, right? Because maybe some of these hit the lung and they run enough to hit. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. I'm not really going to do much science on uh, the shotguns just because I get the feeling uh, the next DLC they will uh, maybe implement, you know, buckshot and slugs and stuff like that. So all of it's going to change. Hopefully. Maybe. Who knows? You know what? I think both of them survived. Both blood trails ran out. So there's a pickle for you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been using the shotguns, but I mean, I've been doing it mainly just for silliness, and it seems to work. Uh, that I'm actually, it's working so much that I'm getting overly confident with it. However, that proved as a failure on both deer. I don't think it knocked either one of them out. I used to put both shells into one, but I mean, seeing that 16 gauge performance, uh, it, it was working great. So now I'm wondering. Is the 16 gauge better than the 12 for some reason in this scenario? I, I don't know. Who knows? Uh, I think there was a, a pheasant around here. So let's just have a little... See if I can actually hit pheasants. I never really hunt them anywhere at all. Okay, go buddy. Here we go. There we go. The robot pheasant. Look at him go. He's stuck. He's wounded. But not dead. Here he goes again. Oh, he's got his wings working this time. Um, yeah, they need to they need to do a little bit of work here on the on the old pheasants. I think it's this guy, right? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, I think am I getting the wrong ones? I don't know. Is this how you pheasant hunt? You just kind of run after them. 
A little robot kind of pheasants. I think that's a hen. You know, this is kind of fun though. <laughs> uh, where'd you go? Yeah, I kind of... Oh no! There he is. Uh, that's all I hit? Huh. Alright. No problem. Sell them for... For eight dollars. Alright, well I gotta stop playing now. The video is 40 minutes. It was just supposed to be a... <laughs> supposed to be... Uh, just a guide on herd management. Okay. Uh, so yeah, hopefully all that info uh, was helpful. Sorry the video went a little longer. Most people, I think, if they got the info they needed, uh, weren't going to stick around for the silliness. Uh, but anyways, uh, like always, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Any kind of uh, thing that you thought I missed or any kind of questions, uh, for sure put it in the comments. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. This is kind of a lot of info. Uh, anyways, take care, guys. See you next time. Happy hunting.